All right, fishy folks, I am on my way to pick up the fish. Uh, it is 27 degrees out, and I wish it was warmer, but uh, I am going to put them in a bucket when I get to his house and try to hurry to get them into my house. Uh, I should say from his house to my car, then into my house as quick as possible. I will drip acclimate them and hopefully remember to film that process. And then you'll see them in a tank. Be back soon. All right, fishy folks, I'm back. Uh, I ended up getting four fish instead of two. Worked out a great deal. So we have a marble, no, a blue marble rainbow male and a blue zebra female and the blue zebra female her uh, organ was down her tube was down when I was when we were netting them out so if she still uh, lays eggs she'll probably lay them today tonight um, hopefully they won't eat them but that would be fantastic they're a pair in this group or this little bucket uh, is another blue marble rainbow male and another uh, blue zebra female that looks a little wonky he said uh, she was deformed so I could just have him have her um, so we'll see what happens you know if if fry come out and they look okay great if they pair up if not I'll try to pair them with something else but uh, for now, I'm going to put them in the same tank just so they can go through quarantine um, and go from there. I am out of Ikex, so I do have a, this is the Ikex, the last Ikex I bought. You can see it's empty. Yeah. Uh, so I do have to go to my local fish store and buy food anyway, so hopefully he has that in stock. And we'll go from there. Um... So currently I'm drip acclimating these guys. His pH was, uh, he said like 6.8. Mine is like 6.8. So I'm not overly concerned over um, water parameters, but you know, we got to drip acclimate just to make sure. And uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with these guys yet because I don't have a tank set up. So, and this I filled this morning. So the pH is probably a little higher. So. Not really sure. I may uh, grab water from another tank. I'll test the water and see how close it is and make a decision there. The other thing I figured out while I was down here is I can fit, I can basically fit three five and a half gallons up, uh, five and a half gallon tanks up there for fry grow out. Um, I'm about an eighth of an inch. There's a about an eighth of an inch too small distance. Yeah, I can't speak. That distance isn't big enough. I'm short about eighth of an inch. So I've moved these tanks over as much as I can. I do have to move that 20, but uh, I'm not gonna be able to move it until I drain about half that water out and then just push it over a skosh. Just like a tiny tidbit of a skosh. Uh, and then I should be able to fit those in there. So then I'll just have to drill those and uh, run drains. Um, I do have one drain hole em open on my that drain pipe back there, but I could just drain them right into the sump, quite frankly. Um, also, I may be short one uh, fill line. So, I have three fill lines there and four empty tanks here. So, I may have to extend that, which is why I put that on the end. Extend that and come along this way uh, to fill or check and make sure I'm not, I don't have two drip emitters in one tank, which I'm pretty sure I don't. But I have an extra emitter here. Um, I forget why, oh, I know why, because I had an extra hole. And I figured eh, we'll give these guys extra water changes. And I have this one here, which was the one from, oh, look at all that food up there. Which was the one from that acrylic tank, that acrylic tank. All right, enough babbling. Uh, I'm gonna put them in the tank and hopefully remember to grab some video for you guys to see them. 
uh, before I medicate the water so it doesn't get all cloudy. Although I don't have Ickex, so the water won't get blue. Um, all right, I got some errands to run, so I want to get these guys in the in their tanks, respective tanks, as soon as possible. So I'll be back. Well, the tank's filling up, and in another dumbass move, I don't know if you can see. Let's see if you look this way, you can see. See, there's that thermometer stuck to the back of the glass. Yeah. If I would have drilled that side of the tank, I could have used that thermometer, you know, like this one. Whether they're accurate or not is a whole nother story, but at least I would have had something. Like all these have them. The five gallons I bought. What a great deal that was, man. $2.50 a tank with lids. Seriously. It's like getting them for free. All right. Uh, so we're filling the tank up. I just put this standpipe in because um, it's not plumbed yet. I do need some more parts. Um, as you can see, I, I drilled them higher. I drilled it higher so that, you know, I can just adjust this length if I need to instead of making sure they're all in line like I originally planned. So yeah, that, uh, that's working fine. That's my old style gasket. I used gasket material. Now I'm using these little O-rings, much more appealing to the eye, which doesn't really bother me, but also it does the same job and it's cheaper, which is really what matters for me. And they're easy. Boom, you slide them on and you're done. All right, folks, I'll be back. All right, fishy folks, we got the first pair in their tank. You can see the blue marble rainbow. Top fin looks a little messed up, but I'm not sure if that's genetic or that's just from his environment. And then the blue zebra, who doesn't look blue at all because the tank is blue. That's a smart move, jackass. Oh, excuse my language. Hey, it's what I had, I don't care. Um. Her tube is not, oh, it's still out a tiny bit, as is his maybe, but. So yeah, that's them. Uh, the pH was the same. Uh, hardness was a little different. His water seemed a little softer than mine. He did mention he has a well, so. And we got water dripping out of water dripping out of here so I'm probably gonna have to put another U up top really not a big deal um, just for now until I get some more plumbing parts um, what else ah so here's what I think I'm gonna do cuz this rack is sort of bowed a little bit I think what I'm gonna do I have another another 2 by 4 I can add in there so I'm probably going to end up draining those tanks almost all the way, just enough for the fish. Sliding that other 2x4 underneath there, and that should help distribute the weight. Instead of two 2x4s, it'll be three 2x4s. So each 2x4 each will assume 33% of the weight. Now, I have a feeling that that was sort of warped. The wood was warped, which is why I got it so cheap. But I thought I put it with the warp facing up. Maybe I didn't do that. So that would be my bad. And really the only way to fix it is to break those tanks down. So I don't know if I'm ready to do that yet, but that's it for now. I will be back when we have those guys in the tank. All right, fishy folks. These guys have been in the tank for about half an hour now. I just want to talk about uh, my quarantine procedure and it's exactly the same as Corey from Aquarium Co-op um, I've been doing that since probably June right before he came with that video I had been talking to him online about it and I decided to try it since my system was all connected I wanted to make sure I quarantined now my system isn't connected, every tank is separate. However, I still want to quarantine, make sure I have healthy fish so that I know when I sell fish to my local fish store, they're healthy. As a matter of fact, when I had that uh, internal parasite breakout in my system, I had sold him some um, endlers and he sold them to a customer who said they had little red worms sticking out of them. 
And so uh, I thought for sure she was full of crap and was just trying to get her money back. But uh, apparently, you know, I had a problem. Anywho, let's go over what we use. First thing we do is API erythromycin. And you could purchase this two ways. You could purchase this in this ginormous 850 gram container, which if you only have a few tanks is gonna be a waste of time because it does expire. Uh, this has an expiration date of December 2017, and it's probably down to about here. So I may not use all of it, but for the amount of fish that I have in my fish room, um, it was cheaper to buy this, which was a little less than $100, than it was to buy in the 10 packet container. Then we go with the general cure. And this also has an expiration date and it also is about a hundred bucks. And this expires in 2019, so I'll probably use that um, up before it expires. And so let's just talk about uh, E. erythromycin is basically an antibiotic, treats, anti treats bacterial diseases, you know, fin rot, gill disease, you can read the container yourself, but essentially it's for the outside of the fish, making sure everything's healthy on the outside. And then we go with the general cure, which kind of takes care of the inside. Um, you know, it says skin flukes and uh, uh, gill flukes, I mean, hole in the head, which I've never had, wasting disease, swollen abdomen. It may or may not take care of those things, but usually when you chew a general cure and the, the there are internal parasites, you can see them excreting, you know, pooping out the external parasites after a couple days. Um, and then we go with the ick -X for ick and some other uh, things on the outside as well. Now, um, how do I treat? Well, I do the recommended dosage once, and then I don't treat, uh, I don't change water for a week. So as an example, one of these scoops takes uh, a 20 gallon tank, and I think it's a teaspoon for 10 gallons for the ick -X. I think that's what it says. I can't read it, look how damn small it is. Uh, yeah, I was right. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we put the medicine in the water and let it sit for a week and we watch the fish. If I see something, you know, see, some exterior, exterior, yeah, external parasite, then I, I look into it and treat accordingly. And same thing with internal parasite. If, you know, after a week I say, see red worms or white poop coming out, I may try again with general cure and I go to something else, something stronger like levamisole, which I also stock in the fish room. Um, if I'm buying something from a fish farm that's outside, I will probably treat with levamisole anyway uh, and that I'll probably treat um, twice I'll do that twice the instructions for levamisole treating are on Greg Sage's website selectaquatics.com so that's that's my quarantine procedure now you can buy all these uh, fine fine products on Amazon I will put some links in the description below if you do buy them I will make probably about, you know, three cents per, per purchase. No, I'm a Amazon associate seller now. Um, if you decide that you wanna click on that link and buy them, great. If not, no skin off my back. I would appreciate it though. If you do, if you are gonna buy them, help me out. Uh, all right, I think it's about time to get these guys into their new home. It's a little dark over here. Boop. All right, I'll be right back. All right, fishy folks, no harm, no foul. They are in the tank. Let's see if we can go over this way and maybe get a better shot. There they are. A little easier to see the blue in these guys. Uh, since the tank isn't blue, the paint isn't blue, but they don't look great because, you know, they just moved three times. Three times, one twice twice they move twice so yeah his fins are a little mangled too I don't know if that's from diet or environment 
or not but so I gotta get a filter in this tank I just realized there's no filter it's really not a big deal I have one right down there um, yeah we'll get us some slate in this tank hopefully before I forget see if she'll spawn on that all right, I gotta go run some errands, guys. I have to go get to go to the irrigation store, buy some more drip emitters, Home Depot, get some more PVC parts, and that's that. I'll be back later. All right, fishy folks, Sunday fun day is coming to an end. This is the Molly tank, the hyphen Lair Tail Molly tank, Creamsicle Lair Tail Molly tank. You can see all the fry. Came out hiding in our eating aquarium co op small fry food. Um, ton of fry. I didn't even know there was that much fry in here. I did take quite a few plants. Ooh, nice finger. I did take quite a few plants out uh, and put them in this tank where the sunset wag platies. I think that's what they are. Uh, and there was some fry in that tank. Um, I might have caught them too late. Let's take a look at the tank though. So yeah, you can see them underneath the filter. See there's one, two, three. There's a couple in there. I'm gonna, <coughs> I'm gonna hang out in there for a little while. And uh, we'll go from there. So the... Try not to get the glare, but... So this tank has quite a few more inhabitants in it now. Um, obviously there's the fry, but all the fish that I could find from the 55 down there Koi sore tails I put in this tank and I put all the neon sore tails in here um, to let the colony grow out so that's that's that I didn't get all the work done that I wanted to do today but I did get quite a bit done um, I did actually glue these so from here down is glued. They're not glued here. Uh, and actually this isn't glued right here because I had to twist it up to get it in. So uh, We fed some heavy brine shrimp for dinner tonight. Hopefully we'll get some eggs tomorrow. I'm hoping these guys spawn. These guys are due for a spawn. I'd love it if I could see a spawn out of that tank. Um, this tank up here, I have a subscriber from Italy, his name starts with a P and I can't remember, I'm so sorry. He watched my last video and said that he found, saw a male in here. And I don't see a male platy. I don't. Maybe if I look longer, I will see a male platy. The reason I don't think there's a male, at least a mature male, is because I haven't seen fry in here in, in quite a while. And I mean, you know all the fry that, all the spawns that came out of this tank, all these guys, all those guys. I mean, there was a ton, so. If you saw a male up there, let me know. That would be great. Looks like we might, I don't know if that's a fry or a, a runt, but lots of fry in the fish room, so that's good. All right guys, Sunday fun day is coming to an end. Hope you guys enjoy your day. Hope you guys enjoy the Super Bowl and the commercials. Favorite Super Bowl commercial of all time is the Star Wars remote start one where the kid is outside in his Darth Vader costume and he's pretending to use a force to start the car and his dad uses the remote start from inside the house. It was a Volkswagen commercial. It's my favorite of all time. Star Wars fan, car guy, so yep. 
Let me know what your favorite is. If you haven't already, maybe hit that subscribe button. Like the video. If you don't like it, thumbs down. Let me know what you don't like. Uh, so I can change it. I'm not saying I'm going to change it, but I might. And share it if you will. And have a great day, guys.